It's an extraordinary setting for an extraordinary story. A lonely mountain fortress in the middle of the Holy Land. The site of a legendary last stand 2,000 years ago. For it was here, say the ancient texts, that a zealous band of Jewish outcasts defied the mightiest army on earth, the Romans. On this summit fortress in the year 73, a group of rebels were trapped as the Romans battered down their defensive walls. They could have surrendered, but according to the only account we have, they remained defiant to the end. They killed their women, they killed their own children, and then they killed themselves. 2,000 years later, this epic story of choosing death over submission continues to fascinate and has even become a controversial political symbol in the modern Middle East. But do we really know what happened here? Did the ancient historian who recorded the events have his own secret agenda? And can today's archaeologists piece together the clues? Dead 73 AD. The Dead Sea Line was, you see where the parking area down the buses? You see these Roman camps? Uh, uh, square, huh? yes. Yes. The Roman camp, the big one, exactly on the sea line. On the sea line, yes. So the sea was already all the way up there. Yeah. Very helpful to know what is, how things happen, how things happen. So we will move because, uh, okay, please keep it open to the other group. I believe all of them are here. Okay, madam. Should we stand to the side? Yeah, stand to the side so the others can move. I welcome, madam. Okay. Compress here. Okay. 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 Everybody, fight. Okay, um, come to the side. Let me tell you the, something fairly, something really necessarily to know, very necessarily to know, that this is a table mountain. It's a table mountain. Huh? If I ask you what is this phenomena, it's desert phenomena in all over the world. Wherever you go to the deserts in the world, you have what we call them table mountains. Was made by the wind. Table mountains made by the same wind, you know. The wind is very strong. The more you go higher, the wind is strong. The more you go down, the wind is slow. So the same wind will take, will eat from the mountain much more on the top. So the time, it will be like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. It will be in silver. Later, you don't have the phenomena. We'll die, we'll go. At the top of all the table mountains, is dolomite stones. What stones? Dolomite. Dolomite. Very hard, very strong stones. The bottom of the table mountains, in all over the world, there will be soft formations, like a clay. We have a clay all the way down, and we have dolomite up in the roof or in the ceiling of the mountain. And really, if you notice Masada, it's disconnected with all the area around. There's no connection. This is why it's Matsada, fortress. Fortress. In Hebrew, Matsada is fortress. And there's no need for walls, indeed, to make there. We make walls in the, on the edge. It's for the safety of those who are inside. It's not because I'm afraid from those who are outside. They will not, they will not be able to come. If you come here and you, I don't like you to come, I take only one rock, like this size, I throw it in the slope of the mountain, then it will fall in your head like 2,000, 3,000 rocks. <laughs> so believe me, you are not able to come if I not invite you. This is why Herod the Great, Herod, who made him a king, was Augustus. Augustus Caesar. In his time, Jesus was born, time of Augustus. He made Herod to be a king. And because he knew really, Herod knew that nobody loves him, he, he used to say to the people, if you don't love me, you have to love my sword. His sword and the next to the people, he had no mercy at all. He married seven wives, one only Jewish wife, one Jewish, Miriam. He killed her. 
to please the Romans. He killed his wife to please the Romans. He killed his hair sons, two sons, to please the Romans. Romans did not trust any Jewish. They were afraid that if Herod died, his... Yes. If Herod died, his power will go to the sons of Miriam. Sons of Miriam are Jewish. You are Jewish, you take your Judaism from your mother's side. That's sure. And all the others are not. So power was given to her as Antipas. His mother was Samaritan. Okay, one second here to continue. We can recollect ourselves. Angela came back. You see, I was telling you, Herod really knew that nobody loves him. This is important. This is his feeling, his weakness. I feel nobody loves me. When nobody loves me, I don't trust anyone. Nobody trusts me. I don't trust anyone. This is what we call it psychologically like a paranoid man. Paranoid man, you know. Really. Therefore, go outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem center of troubles. And he made it center of troubles. He and his father, Auntie Peter, they made it a center of troubles. Therefore, he went outside Jerusalem. He built many palaces. One of his main palaces, we will be there later. And this area used to be a retreat house. You have headache, you have problems, you come here. I speak with Herod. <laughs> Herod, problems, personal problems, come here. How did he come here? Very easily. He had his cable car. <laughs> <laughs> he had his slaves, huh? Many slaves. Read Josephus Flavius in the book Jewish Wars. He, he would say, to be, to make a good life in the palace of Herod, if you are a slave, you have to go to somebody to cut your tongue. Why to cut your tongue? You see, but... Don't tell. Don't tell. That's it. This is Herod. Imagine. Josephus says about him, it is good to be a pig in Herod's house than to be his children. They were worse than him. Wow. All of them worse than him. But at the end, Herod died up in Jericho. He died in Jericho. They buried him someplace in near Bethlehem. At the end, he died. And how... <laughs> How did he die? You know, Josephus described his death. He said the man was really unable to stand, unable to move. His, in the gospel, it is in the book of Acts, we believe really what was written about his grandson, Herod Agrippa the first. His body smelled, smelled, stinky body. Uh, how, how he says? Worms. The worms ate his flesh. This is syphilis. It's kind of syphilis. It's a man with no moralities. You know, it's a king and have many wives and uh, many concubines and this desert, you know, and desert, uh, you know, with uh, one kilogram of coffee, you can have uh, three concubines. <laughs> but anyway, really, this hero's life, nothing important. He went, khalas, he died. After he died, it's used for nothing, good for nothing. Who came here? With, with, you know which year Herod died? 4 BC, after the birth of Jesus in one year, Herod died. Herod, Herod's children, who took the main power? Herod's Antipas. Herod's Antipas, his mother was Samaritan. Imagine to whom he gave the power. Why the, to please whom? The Romans. Why to please the Romans? Because Jewish hate Samaritans, and Samaritans hate Jewish. So he gave the power to Antipas. The Romans would be very happy because of that. So we continued. We read that this area was neglected, really. And who came here? The Zealots. The Zealots is not a movement of one day old. It's not a movement. Zealots, you know, imagine, really, I, we always please discuss this. Shimon the Zealots is a friend of Jesus. You know what he spoke with Jesus, really. But we know at the end, really, Jesus tamed him. Indeed, Jesus tamed him. He was a very wild man. But he made him nice, disciple, you see, one of the twelve. You see. Indeed, you know, Herod died. This place was taken by the zealots. And the zealots decided from the beginning, we cannot live with the Romans. The Romans took our country 68, 68 BC. 
Это Помпея, Жюлий Сизар. Орвью, Рид Жюлий Сизар, Рид Жюлий Сизар. Помпея, Жюлий Сизар. Then, you know, after that, the, from that time, it's the continuation of the Greek. When we say Hellenism, we mean Greek-Roman civilization. Civilization continues, the same civilization, but we have new faces. Once we had Alexander Mosidon, now we had uh, Octavius, and uh, I mean Octavius is Augustus. Remember Octavius Caesar, Mark Antony? Mark Antony was in Egypt. Octavius' wife was the sister of Mark Antony. Mark Antony fell in love with this Cleopatra. Herod the Great fell in love with the Cleopatra. She was here many times. He had children from here. See, a woman that she was, you know, but he forgot Rome. Mark Antony forgot Rome, forgot his wife, his children, and for the love of that woman, he came down to Egypt. He was killed later, Mark Antony, by Octavius. He came to revenge his sister in Actium, in the Battle of Actium, in the Mediterranean Sea. Anyway, you know, the country really was over flooded by Hellenism. Hellenism. Why Jewish? What's, what's some question really? Why Jewish? You think these Moabians, they care for if there will be... Who care for no Hellenism? Only those that they have what we call it spiritual teaching. That's it. If you don't have spiritual teaching, you never care. But if I have high priest, his name is Caiaphas. You remember Caiaphas? Mm. And I go to Caiaphas, I tell him, do you know that Herod killed his wife, Miriam? You know what he would answer me? If there is no reason, he will not kill her. <laughs> <laughs> is there any reason to say thou shalt kill? No, we really, we don't have these reasons at all. Forbidden to kill. If you go to any religion, any religion in the world, and you say, thou shalt not kill unless... It's not a religion from God. That's it. It's not from God. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not kill. There is no reason. But if you go to the high priest, you know, pay him ten dollars, he will make you a priest. Indeed, this is that time. Why? Because you see, you cut your tongue. He, if Herod the Great had no high priest to sign his evils, he will not do the evils. He's not killed only Jesus, remember. I mean, Mary, you know, we have the gospel to tell us, especially that period, really. We have no historians. And many historians that they were in that time, they liked to hide Jesus. Especially Josephus Flavius. He wants to hide him. But how can you hide the truth? Hellenism should stop. Stop Hellenism. Please really go and read. I wish that was very good friend really died sorry he died last month this professor you saw him mm. he died last month i was in masada when he died really and the flags the all the flags the, you've been with us half yeah all them half really that he died in where you know where he died he he looked all his life to find the tomb of Herod the great oh. he found the tomb in the Herodion. he found it two years ago last month he asked American archaeologists, Germans, the British, to come to show them the slope where he find the tomb. He was very proud. He was kneeling like that on the rail. He fell down. Oh. In the tomb. Oh. In the tomb. And he rolled about 10 meters in the slope. He broke his spine. Oh. They moved him really by helicopter. But oh. really. This man was one of the best archaeologists. Oh, not sorry. So this old man. Oh. This is, yani, Easy, you know, we the Christians, we analyze it sometimes, the story of the tragedy. You understand why we are, I mean, uh, 1,000 people, they kill themselves, you know. It's for the reason of what? I cannot live with my enemy. This is all the philosophy. I cannot live with my enemy. That's it. Either he kills me or I kill him. All that's it. I'm afraid from this teacher who was giving there a little talk to his students, he said, that this is the entrance to Israel. No way, really, it's not the entrance to Israel. <laughs> the, no way, it's a dangerous teaching. The entrance is, how shall I do to know how to live with my enemy? That's it. Otherwise, no way. Come, let's go. <laughs>